dust Another one bites the dust And another one gone And another one gone Another one bites the dust Hey, hey Gonna get you too Another one bites the dust In this video, we'll be discussing the properties, structure, and processing of nitinol, a synthetic biomaterial currently used as an ACL replacement. The anterior cruciate ligament, or the ACL, is one of, the, of two cross ligaments that hold together the tibia and femur. The other ligament is the posterior cruciate ligament, or the PCL. The ACL's purpose is to make sure that the tibia and the femur do not rotate too far from each other. Lack of the ACL or PCL or both would result in a very limited mobility in the knee and lots of friction between the bones. Now we will look at ACL injuries. There are over 100,000 ACL tears in the United States every year and is most common for athletes. The ACL can withstand a certain amount of torsion, but it can tear if the tibia and femur twist beyond the, that limit in opposite directions with the full body's weight. ACL tearing is more common than PCL tearing because the knee is a hinge joint and naturally bends in a way that leaves the ACL much more prone to tearing than the PCL. The torn ACL is dangerous because not only is mobility in the knee very limited, but it causes friction between the bones and may lead to bone degradation. Currently, there are non-surgical and surgical methods in practice based on the severity and needs of the individual. For patients with low daily activity levels or are of an age that can be a risk factor, a non-surgical method is usually proposed. This method includes bracing and physical therapy and makes sure that the overall stability of the knee is mostly maintained. However, for the ACL to heal, the patient will need surgery. This is a process where the ligament is reconstructed by replacing the torn ACL with a tissue graft from the new ligament to grow on. The source of grafts used are from hamstring tendons, quadricep tendon, and mostly and most common, the patellar tendon. This is the tendon that runs between the kneecap to the shin bone. ACL repair surgery is often a crucial procedure for the patient. Without it, they would not be able to go back to work or continue the activities that they value. Unfortunately, this also leaves the tendon susceptible to re-injury. ACL re-injury occurs in roughly 5% of patients and poses an even greater problem because in many cases, a separate tendon graft may not be available. In this instance, doctors must look elsewhere to return function to the joint. Enter nitinol, a nickel-titanium alloy with unique properties that make it best suited to act as an artificial ACL in cases of dire need. Nitinol retains its shape, even under heavy stress and its super elasticity allows it to be durable for the lifetime of the joint. Nitinol also has excellent biocompatibility, meaning that it won't be rejected by surrounding tissues after it is implanted. In Nitinol, shape memory is possible through the process of the alloy being able to be bent and reshaped in its martensitic form and then revert reverting back to its parent shape by heating the alloy above its transformation temperatures. Like all shape memory alloys, nitinol possesses a super elastic property which makes it specially suited for applications as a biomaterial. This property means that on unloading, the nitinol wire will return to its original position without suffering deformation, even after severe strains. In fact, nitinol alloy can be deformed to 8% strains, which is approximately 40 times greater than the maximum strain of stainless steel. You might wonder what exactly it is that allows nitinol to behave the way it does. So now we will examine nitinol at the molecular level. At very high temperatures, about 500 degrees Celsius, nitinol takes on a cubic crystal structure that is called austenite. But at a lower temperature, about negative 50 to 160 degrees Celsius, it has a monoclinic crystal structure called martensite. Here we have a simple representation of the 3D structure of nitinol. The orange blocks represent austenite while the blue blocks represent martensite. Nitinol in the austenitic phase can be made into any shape at a very high temperature, and when it naturally cools down to room temperature, it transforms into the martensitic phase. It does this without changing the overall length of the nitinol. Nitinol in the martensitic phase can be deformed with external force, and the bonds will reorganize themselves similar to a shearing mechanism into a shape that is about 10% longer than the original austenitic phase, which is an enormous amount for a metal. 
Shape memory occurs when we heat the nitinol back to a very high temperature, and it will return to its original shape in the austenitic phase because it is most stable at that temperature. The more important property for ACL replacement, superelasticity, occurs when austenitic nitinol with a different composition transforms into the martensitic phase with stress instead of temperature change. When it's deformed, since it is most stable in the austenitic phase, it will naturally spring back. This is responsible for the superelastic property. Now we will have a little demonstration to show the shape memory alloy property of nitinol. Here we have a nitinol spring, which we will deform at room temperature. It can be extensively bent and deformed. The bottle is full of hot water, and when the deformed nitinol is placed in the hot water, it returns to its original shape. The longer the wire is heated for, the more malleable but less strength it will have. So the trade-off is strength for malleability. Finding the proper balance for the requested nitinol standards is crucial. For the next topic, we'll look at how nitinol is actually processed. And for, the, for this topic exactly, we will assume a 50-50 weight percent of nitinol for all processing methods. The first step is to have continuous strain annealing at 450C to 550C and at 35 to 100 MPa. A system like the one in the picture ensures uniform thermomechanical properties throughout the wire. In addition, annealing gives nitinol its most valuable properties, super elasticity and shape memory. Nitinol has been proven to be a safe and implantable alloy in the knee, specifically by an Israeli company, Tavor, with nitinol implant. It does provide an option for people who have severely or repeatedly torn their ACL, but it's promoted as more of a last resort option for people because nitinol is not easily welded or machined and is very expensive. Studies are now being conducted on how to produce a hybrid of steel and nitinol to take advantage of the combined high tensile strength, elasticity, and resistance to fatigue and corrosion. Overall, nitinol is a promising biomaterial with unique qualities and applications, including ACL replacements.